Hey guys, Dr. Dex here. Today I want to talk to you about something that we are forced and regulated to do on every single deck project. Uh, we have to create a tie-in that's a lateral tension tie from the deck joist to the house. That's where these come in. This is called a Simpson Strong Tie DTT1Z. And there's a couple different types, but this is a type that we use because it's a much easier, simpler install than actually, and less intrusive than if we have to go inside the house and use a different type of tension tie. So four of these are required on every deck build with, that we build. And the main thing is right here, this is like a cutaway and you have to attach to the top plate or some kind of a sill plate. So you can't attach to like, let's say the floor joists come all the way out. You have to ta attach to the top plate or a mid plate or something like that inside the wall. So you have to kind of verify to make sure that you have that. Well, and then I have people say, well, wait a minute. What if your deck's not at that height? Well, then you either have to prescriptively figure out a way to attach to the stud in the wall, or this graphic right here kind of shows you if you if you are if your deck's lower, you can still you still have to attach into like a top plate or a bottom plate, something with some lateral tension. So if there's an earthquake, that this joist is attached with this bracket, and it's attached to this sill plate so that this deck cannot fall away from the house. If I'm using the wrong terminology, it's okay to leave me a note, but I'm not perfect, okay? So cut me a little slack, I'm a deck builder. So it says right here on this graphic that you gotta be at least two feet away from the end of the deck, and then they have to be equally spaced between there. Now on our particular deck project, we have some brick on the house, so we're gonna have to do things a little bit differently. I've already spoken to the local building inspector about that, so uh, he's, he's cool with what I'm proposing because we have a fireplace that we're trying to work around and some brick facades on the walls, which will not allow us to do that equal spacing. But I told him I'm gonna one up you anyways, and I'm gonna add more than four on this deck because I have a couple spots where I feel in an earthquake, it would be necessary to have those installed anyways. That way I can just make sure that this deck's not gonna pull away from the house. Let's open up the box and see what's inside and take a look at the hardware. All right, so these are the fasteners. Here's the bracket. This is the actual D DTT1Z bracket. Now there's a couple different, from what I've been told in the past, these are the holes you are mandatory. These two holes you gotta add if you're in a high wind area, hurricane, that kind of thing. So Florida, uh, East Coast, type situations gulf coast but i usually fill them anyways if i've got the screws if there's enough screws in here i'll fill every hole and if there's not i still have more of these simpson sd screws we use plenty of these things so i have extras so if we need to we can add more i have longer ones i have these short ones as well and then they come with a structural screw that will go in okay so here's your uh ledger then you have a joist hanger. So these are designed to be behind the joist hanger, okay? So when this goes in, like so, you've got about this far before you get to the wall. Then you got your siding, whatever's behind that, plywood maybe, and then actually going into the uh, wall plate. So these are eight inch screws. So plan accordingly, if you only got two by four studs, make sure that you're not a pushing through the other side of the wall, okay? That's my Mario impression, how'd I do? I know for a fact that we have a two by six, so we have five and a half inches that we can go into. And I don't know if it's really gonna matter um, if you poke through the other side, depending on your height. If you're, on, if you're doing this into studs, it will matter. But if you're doing it into the sill plate and it pokes through, you're just gonna be on the other side of the floor cavity, so not such a big deal. Okay, so we got that, we got that. And these are also Z-Max rated. So that's what the, with the DTT1 with the Z that's stamped right in the stamped right in there. Can you see that? The Z stands for Z-Max. So it has extra corrosion resistance against pressure treated lumber, which is what we're using on this. These are kind of created for deck builders, so you can use them for other instances, but it is a deck tension tie. Okay, and then of course they always include directions. 
And you know, we, we've installed quite a few of these, so we kind of know what we're doing. Oh man, looks like the box got a little wet. There's all kinds of scenarios in here for you guys. You can go to Simpson's webpage, Strong Tie. <laughs> You can't, yeah. Just go to their website. They have all that stuff on their webpage, man. And I know it's all a digital era. You guys like to look at videos and watch things. So go there and you can get all the different ways that you can attach these products to your joists. Okay, enough talk. Let's see some action. Let's go, come on. All right guys, so now uh, we're over at the joist. I've chosen to install the DTT1Z. You can see the joist hangers right here. Here's your ledger. I've already, I've already determined that there's the wall plate that we need to be into. Now, just so you know, DJ Studio Man and I are so loyal and dedicated to, to your satisfaction of this channel that we're putting this in and I've got to completely take it out because we got to trim this still. <laughs> but I don't have the trim here and it's not done. So I'm gonna install this bracket and then we're gonna take it back apart and reinstall it later but I just want you guys to see how easy it is and how quick this is so there's no confusion on how these are installed. So you need two size bits. You need a quarter inch bit hex drive and then you need a 3 8 inch hex drive bit for the big bolt. So these are the little ones. Um, sometimes a magnetic tip is better. I don't happen to have one right now. But you can see where the joist hanger is. So we need to install this bracket behind that joist hanger. And that's what I'm gonna do. Like I said, I'm gonna use all of the holes. If there's a hole and it can be filled, I'm gonna fill it. That's just cause I like to do it that way. Okay, gonna switch bits. Put in my 3 8 bit, hex head. And now I just have to install this. Here we go. You don't want to overdrive it, but you want it to be snug. So now, if they're in case of an earthquake, if the whole deck wants to fall off the side of the house, which I built this, so I highly doubt that's gonna happen, but you never know. This will help keep the lateral tension of the deck against the house. Now, little secret, if you look over here, that's actually a floor joist that goes all the way into the house. So we're gonna attach our deck to that as well. So that's gonna act just like this bracket, but just for safety's sake and just to keep everybody happy and the building inspector happy, everybody's gotta be happy, right? So we're gonna install these as well. So we'll probably put six of these on this house because of the fact that we're working around a chimney. I've already talked to building inspector about that as well. He's happy with it. And he, as long as he sees these on final inspection, we're dialed. Basically, that's all you gotta do though, guys, to make that work. Thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions, leave them below. Don't forget to click that subscribe button. Hit the bell icon to be notified when we're putting out fresh content. And leave a comment below. I'll get back at you as soon as I can. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a great day.